Mandalorian is willing to help us slay the Leviathan in exchange for returning the armor to its ancestral owners. They will stand by our side in battle and vow never to raise a blaster against this town until one of you breaks the peace. Awesome. Look at this little treaty going on. These things are awesome. Look at these guys. There's so many Banthas and stuff. We got like a whole little crew. Way to start episode one. These guys are ballsy, man. I give it to them. They just saw their dude get eaten. Here we go, guys. I hope their plan works. Look at these guys hauling ass, man. Jesus Christ. But what if it just plows through them? I think those guys are dead too now. That thing would manhandle those things. Like that. Was that like digestive acids that melted them? Oh my god! I love it. This is amazing. They better move quick. Jesus. Let's four do that. It's so fast. There he is. What are you gonna do? I don't know, but wish me luck. Well, that isn't a safe way to handle it. What if Mando gets eaten by it? He'd have to blow it up from the inside with him in it. How's he going to survive? Oh my god. How did he get out? Oh, his friggin' staff. <laughs> that is gross, yet awesome. They're just hacking up meat. Look at that chunk of me. I didn't have time to explain. I hope our paths cross again. As do I. Oh, and you tell your people I wasn't the one that broke that. Look at the Raiders celebrating. We got our two. Is that him? What a first episode, guys. Amazing, amazing first episode. I would have never guessed any of this. I mean, I knew Boba Fett was going to probably come to fruition at some point. Either the man or the suit. We get both, I think. Was that man Boba Fett? He was old enough to be. We've never seen him without his mask. He is scarred up. He has crazy weapons with him. But I don't understand why he wouldn't have his suit with him. That's the only thing that's confusing me. For most of the episode, I started thinking, is he somehow cocooned inside the crate Dragon and he's been preserved all this time, suffering in anguish? Or is he slowly being digested? That was always a thing people talked about. The Sarlacc Pit Monster, the crate Dragon, I guess is what it's called. I've never heard it referred to as the crate Dragon. I know it as the Sarlacc Pit Monster. All episode, I'm saying, was that the Sarlacc Pit Monster? Because they're calling it a crate Dragon. Then I think about the wording, Sarlacc Pit Monster. There's a monster in the pit. It's just called a crate Dragon. It is the Sarlacc Pit Monster. But now that it comes fully out of the hole, you could see it is like a dragon-looking creature. It's just the way we saw it in Return of the Jedi. All you really saw was the mouth. It was more of a monster that was in a hole than it was a thing that comes out like this. I don't know. Maybe they evolved it into something else, or maybe it's always been like that, and they just didn't have the ability to do what they wanted to do back then because practical effects 
cost a lot of money and they didn't have computer graphics. All I know is they did a bang up job in this. The crate Dragon looked amazing. It is fast. It is deadly. It just starts regurgitating acid all over these Tusken Raiders. Lots of people died. Probably a good dozen or two Tusken Raiders, a couple villagers too. We Quay is here. I am assuming that is not just a We Quayan of the race. That is We Quay from Return of the Jedi. I have an action figure of him. Like I said, he's gotten older, he's gotten fatter, and now he runs a bar. But I'll show you guys in the next episode. He even had the same hair. The action figure I have, he has like a long ponytail and he had it in this but it's like his hair is thinning he's going bald he's overweight amazing stuff it's got to be that guy it can't just be a coincidence things like that don't happen in this show it is references to nostalgia we also got the r5 unit is that the same r5 unit that blew up at uncle owen's back in a new hope that is what made them get the r2 unit because the r5 unit blew up now i'm aware there are a billion R5, R2s, all sorts of things. But I feel like it's possible just because it's this show. We didn't see anybody else besides the Strangers with Candy Lady, that's the mechanic, the three robots that she has employed that are awesome too. We get Timothy Oliphant as this Marshall guy. Amazing stuff because he's Marshall Raylan Givens in Justified, one of my favorite shows of all time. I have his hat over here from Justified. I have Raylan Givens' hat over here. He's a marshal in it. And he also played a marshal in Deadwood. Just a great role for him to play. I started wondering, is it possible if he is Boba Fett and just lying? Like maybe he doesn't want people to know he's alive or that he's Boba Fett and he's just lying, but... Then he had his whole tale. It all sort of made sense. He said he got the armor from the Jawas, and it appears he did. My biggest question now is, was that Boba Fett? I'm assuming it was. The actor looked somewhat familiar, but honestly, not really that much. All I know is I'm pretty sure that dude at the end was Boba Fett. He was walking in the opposite direction of where Mando was going, though. I feel like. It could easily be someone else that is going to be revealed to us later. I only have 30-something episodes left, and nothing in this spoiled anything related to Clone Wars for me yet. So I think I lucked out. I think the first episode had no spoilers. I can marathon the last of the series this week, possibly, hopefully, and then be good to go. And then I will have no spoilers when Ahsoka Tana pops into this. I'm just going to call it there. We'll talk more. If you guys want to be way ahead, if you're seeing this on YouTube, I am up to date on whatever the current aired episode is on Patreon, full unedited reactions of this and other shows. Clone Wars is rolling. All of those episodes are full unedited too. Patreon link in front of me. If not, comments down below, like it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.